Welcome to our YouTube channel where wisdom meets inspiration. In this channel, we share valuable insights to help you become the best version of yourself. Our content is designed to uplift your spirit and enrich your life. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay connected with this incredible I seek blessings of Ma Mangala Devi. I'm extremely honored uh, to be here today on the occasion of Swami Vivekananda's birthday which is also celebrated as a National Youth Day. A year ago, one of my friend was getting married and his parents wanted them to meet at a restaurant outside so they get to know each other better. So it was a Saturday afternoon. They met in a restaurant for lunch and uh, the girl suddenly removes her laptop from her bag. The guy ushers, hey, it's Saturday afternoon, do you still have to work? She quickly gives her cell phone to the guy and says, can you please click few pictures of mine? So the guy happily clicks few pictures and hands her back the cell phone. The lunch arrives, the laptop was closed, it was never open after that, and they happily had their lunch, they had desserts, and you know, they headed back home. So after they headed back home, the guy opens his Instagram feed and he sees a post made by this girl. Hashtag corporate life when you have to work on a weekend. Are we living in a fake world using social media? Are we using social media for entertainment? Or can we use social media to create a positive impact around us? Today, I'm going to tell you four stories. Just four stories from my personal and professional life and how did it digital and social media has made a spiritual impact on our lives. So 10 years ago, I was going to get married to my husband in the US. Like most of the girls, the plan was I had already resigned my job and I was supposed to go to US to settle with my husband. But I did not go to US, right? I'm still here, right in front of all of you. No, it's not what you're thinking. I'm still happily married to the same person. Well, I had my roots here in Mangalore. I grew up in Mangalore and most of you would connect to what I'm saying right now. Mangalore is one place which is so rich when it comes to culture, heritage, programs, events, functions. Throughout the year, you have something or the other going on over here in this city. And such was my childhood. I must say, my childhood was really colorful. I may not have been as smart as most of you seated over here today, but I must say that I had a real childhood because back then we did not have access to any gadgets, let alone be any kind of, you know, social media. I still remember every Friday, we used to walk three to four kilometers to the Mangla Devi temple to enjoy the amazing lunch that is served over there. So all these thoughts began to, you know, kind of ponder over me. And I began to think, what will I do going to US? What kind of a life do I really want? What kind of a future do I really, you know, uh, think about? And trust me, this was all just two weeks. It was an arranged marriage. And you know that, you know, we really don't get time during these things. So we were just two weeks away from our marriage. And uh, I spoke to my husband about my concerns. He empathized with me because he also was from a small town. He went to US for his education and he settled over there. His plan was few years down the line, we'll come back to our country and do something over here. So the question was, why not now? So we thought over it and just within two weeks, both of us decided that we're going to stay back in India. So I had resigned my job already thinking that I was going to US. Marriage was two weeks away. So I decided to stay back. My husband left his job in US, came back to India, we got married. Well, it wasn't all romantic, right? We just got married, we were broke, we were jobless. Everyone questioned us, are you guys out of your mind? What are you even doing? But slowly something began to dawn on us. We were still in our own country. We were still surrounded by our own people. We saw an ocean of opportunities in front of us. And thus, I entered into one of the most creative phases in my life. After that, I success successfully went ahead 
and build my career in finance, working with multiple MNCs like JP Morgan, Walt Disney Company, Citibank, and currently with Amazon. My husband ended up running multiple businesses, and he's also pretty successful right now. So would all of these have happened had we moved outside India? Maybe not. Like Swami Vivekananda says, when there is a conflict between your mind and your heart, you always choose your... This is something common to youngsters. You always say that, right? When there's a conflict between your mind and your heart, you always choose your... Loud! Heart, exactly. And that's what we did. We chose our heart. We did not have a plan in mind. But all we knew is we wanted to stay back. We want to do something in our country. And that's where our journey began. Now let me go a little back, you know, just be before marriage. Uh, like Professor Ravi spoke about failure and how important it is. I would also like to tell you that everything is not so, you know, glory like you just saw in the one minute video. There's been a lot of up and downs that we have, you know, gone in our life. And what we have gone through to even be here, you know, to this date. Uh, so it was early in my graduation days, like most of you. Uh, I did my graduation and when we are in our graduation, I think the only goal or ambition that we have is we just need a job. All our problems will come to an end, just I need a job. So I was of a similar mindset. I just felt that, okay, I did my graduation, I went to Mumbai for my post-graduation, I did my MBA in finance, all I need is a job and all my difficulties are going to come to an end. So in the second year of MBA, we have multiple uh, uh, is companies, right, coming for plas uh, placement interviews. I was very prepared, I was pretty confident, and uh, I thought, okay, you know, I'll get through the interviews, not a big deal at all. So I sat through the first company, I went till the last round, I got rejected. Okay, the second company came, I again sat for interviews, and all of you must be knowing or you would know that, you know, when it's placement time, there are so many different rounds to even reach till the last round. So I sat for the second company, again went till the last round, again got rejected. I sat for the third company, the fourth company, so on and so forth. I, I got failed so many times. I was rejected so many times. But I must say that somehow, because, you know, I had my roots over here, I had some connection with spirituality. I did not get into things like depression or anxiety. Somehow I was able to keep myself together during this difficult phase. So finally when the 18th company came to campus is when I got through. And luckily it happened to be one of the top MNC banks. And I felt like I literally, you know, won the war. This is it, you know. I don't have any difficulties in my life after this. Little did I know that was just a second phase of my life, which is the corporate life, much difficult than the life that I've already seen till now. So yeah, I mean, I'm in Bombay, you know, between the most of the most intelligent brains working over there together. I'm from a, you know, small little town over here. Kind of survived, you know, one year. So it was a time of uh, year-end appraisal. Um, so I went into the room and uh, then my manager, he literally threw the paper on my face. I am not being dramatic over here. He literally threw the paper on my face and he said, you got the lowest rating. What have you even done so far for one year? I was in tears. I was so lost. It was my first job. I didn't have any prior work experience. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what even to even answer. I came out of the room crying, you know, I cried all day. After that day, all I decided was, let me take 10 steps back. I need to learn. I need to pick up from my failure. And this is not the first time I'm failing. I failed so many times. I got through, you know, 17 rounds of companies before even coming here. So I worked upon each of the weaknesses that was highlighted to me. And I converted all my weaknesses into my strengths. And that's all. After that day, till, till, till today, there's no looking back again. So the way my friends I'm coming from is failure is as important as success and social media definitely does not teach you that. Constantly on social media, we are only seeing 
you know, uh, your friends going to parties, going to exotic locations. We only see good, good, good things. Does anyone post about failure on social media? Nobody really does post anything on social media. So always keep in mind that this constantly seeming perfect life of everyone that you see, that you keep scrolling on social media is having an impact on your brain without your knowing. And studies have already, you know, already shown that it leads to low, low inferiority and you know, low self-esteem. So don't let social media make you feel like a failure. It's very funny how you know, Instagram and Facebook makes you feel like a failure if you're not rich by 25. And when you go out, when you meet people who are successful in the real world, they end up telling you stories like, hey, when I was in your age, I was just a junior accountant, I was just a developer, I used to do freelancing, we lived in a shared apartment, we just ate one samosa every day. So don't compare yourself to anyone on social media. It is very rightly said that in order for you know, him or her to achieve your fullest potential, it is okay to fail sometimes. It is okay to fail sometimes. It is okay if you're not going to any exotic locations for a vacation. It is okay if you're not rich by 25. But what is not okay is to compare yourself to anyone on the social media out there. So yeah, that was my story about you know, uh, my graduation and post-graduation days. Now coming back to social media and what kind of uh, impact it has made on our lives. So this is again, you know, circling back after our wedding. Uh, like I already told you guys, we were, you know, broke, we did not have a lot of money. Uh, so we did not have too much money, you know, like how most of the couples go to honeymoon outside India. And my husband was just starting his spiritual tourism company then. So we thought, let us do something different. We thought we'll visit the holy places in India so we can immerse ourselves in that and experience ourselves before passing on this experience, you know, to our consumers. So we decided to, you know, go to the holy places in India, which is called as a Chardam Yatra, the Yamunotri, Gangotri, Kedarnath and Badrinath. And this was much before the hype around the Kedarnath, you know, Kedarnath movie was not there. It was not so popular as it is popular today. So that is the first trip that we took after a marriage, a marriage, you can call it, you know, our uh, honeymoon trip. Uh, so we finished Yamunotri, we finished Gangotri, and then we went to Kedarnath. Uh, so when you have to go to Kedarnath, there is a small place, you know, where you have to take a bus, and then it takes you to another location. From there you start trekking. So we boarded that bus, we sat in the bus, and uh, we looked around. It was all elderly people around us. I was like, okay, because I was literally blank. I didn't have any idea about, you know, what a Chardam Yatra is, what should I expect. We were just going with the flow. A young lady, uh, sorry, an older lady turned towards me and says, Beta, aapke time mein to baut li uh, aapke life mein to baut time mein itna jaldi kyu kar rahe ho Chardam Yatra? <laughs> what I mean to say is, she looked at us and she said, you have a lot of time in your life. Why are you doing Chardam Yatra now? You're so young. That kind of, you know, hit us really deep. It made us feel, we as youngsters, are we so disconnected to our roots? Do we really know what is there in our incredible country? Do we even know why do we visit to these temples? What is the historical significance behind this? So that remained with us for quite some time. So we even finished our yatra nicely and uh, because we are just married, we had a small camera with us to just capture, you know, all our uh, memories. So we came back, but something was still there in us, you know, we could not let this experience go away. We wanted it to share with everyone on how beautiful this journey was. It was extremely difficult, it was tiring, but we were amazed to see how beautiful our country is. The Himalayas, the mountains, the people living in villages, you know, with absolutely, you know, very limited resources, but how happy they are. So many things, you know, on our mind. So we came back and we thought, let's create a YouTube channel and we'll put all these videos together and let's just post it on our channel. So that was the first video that we had posted on our channel, Myoksha. 
and trust me, it is one of the most rawest video possible. Even now, if you go back and see, half of the places I'm so tired, I'm so exhausted because it's a lot of trekking, a lot of walking. And uh, you know, I, there are a few places where I was annoyed with my husband saying, you know, please stop clicking photographs, don't take any videos. So it was totally unscripted video, but it captured the true essence of our yatra for the 15 to 20 days. So we put this up on YouTube, and slowly and steadily, the YouTube video started getting popular. We started getting calls. We started getting so many calls. And believe me or not, this time, all the calls that we were getting were not from the elderly people, but it was from all the younger generation who were asking us various questions like, hey, we want to go to this yatra. Can we do a solo travel? Can you do this? Can you do that? And we were amazed to see how powerful social media can be, how it can be utilized if it is channelized for the right thing. The U video became extremely popular and even till day, I think it has roughly around, you know, six million views on YouTube. And if you say Chardam, someone who knows YouTube, who's working on YouTube would know, it is such a difficult task for a video to show up on the top. And Chardam is such a popular video, right? You have lakhs of videos over there on YouTube. And even to this date, if you go back and check on YouTube, that is still the first video that will show up. So that kept motivating us. We thought we need to do something. We need to do something out of our corporate passion. So I'm still a corporate professional. You must be thinking, you know, she's so young, she's working, she's having a nice professional life. What is she even doing in spirituality? But trust me, I'm here today to break that myth. Spirituality has nothing to do with age. And if you immerse yourself in spirituality, the more earlier, the more better for all of us. Spirituality, it doesn't mean I'm not telling you go to pujas, you know, go to temples. Spirituality is all about embracing your roots, knowing your culture, knowing your own country, trying to think what you can contribute in a small way, you know, one way or the other. It need not be something big, it not be, you know, we never thought it was going to be so popular. So that is my idea of spirituality and that is how, you know, digital and social media made an impact. Now lastly, talking about the fourth story, which is pandemic. So pandemic hit all of us hard, including you, me, all of us, not only in India, but also outside India. So we were in Mumbai back then and uh, we were clueless. Tourism was majorly hit. That was, you know, the business which was majorly suffered. So everything that we put in, so much of hard work came to a standstill. We thought, what do we do now? We felt so helpless in situation like this, where there's so much negativity, there's so much of uncertainty. How can we contribute? Now, Mumbai is a big city. There was, you know, real lot restrictions and, you know, we live in flats over there. We really felt we could not do anything. We just packed our bags overnight and we came off to Mangalore. It struck us that, you know, in this time where people are not able to go to temples, right, people are not able to wait, uh, attend pujas, especially Mangalore is one of those places where you'll find people all over the country come over here to attend the Bhuta Kolas, the Daivaradhane, you know, Beat Kati or Mangla Devi Temple, which is more likely a yearly or, you know, a monthly ritual for them. They could not come to temples. We thought we need to do something. Let us take temples to everyone's house during this time. So we decided, let us do documentaries on all the temples in and around Mangalore. We spoke to the local authorities here in Mangalore and everyone became very supportive of this idea because this was never done before. Now that was step one. Now step two was our goal still remained the same. We wanted the youth to connect to our roots, the youth to understand why are we going to this temple? What is the historical significance behind this temple? Because at least that was my childhood. I used to go to my temple because my parents went. I did not even know what is the story, how old it is and how, you know, uh, uh, more interesting things like that. So we thought let's do these documentaries in English so that it reaches not only the people of Mangalore, but it reaches the people across the globe. And this way, you know, it, we are boosting tourism in Mangalore. People will get to know that, you know, how beautiful this place or land of Mangalore. It is literally a land of temples. It is so rich when it comes to, you know, culture, heritage and all these things. 
So we started to do these documentaries and this was alongside with our work. Now you must be thinking, we must have had some experience in digital media, something in editing or camera or your, my husband must be a cameraman or he must have, you know, some uh, idea about it. But believe it or not, both of us had no clue. We had no clue how to even hold a camera in our hand, how to shoot, how to do a documentary. But all we had was a vision. All we had was a goal. Day in and day out, we started learning. And now, you know, we have YouTube, we have so many platforms. It is not like before, right? We sat in the house, my husband used to focus on, you know, how to do editing, how to take videos. I used to focus on, you know, the research of temples, understanding the history, you know, putting things together. We used to meet people, understand, you know, stories from their side. This is how we spent the next one and a half, two years in Mangalore. So we documented all the temple videos and again, all this was done without any expectations, with only one goal, to create positiveness in people's life. Slowly, people started calling us, telling, oh my God, in such a difficult time, you guys are doing an amazing work. It's so beautiful to see these temples, you know, because it was less crowded, it was only both of us. And literally, it was just two of us who did everything. I was an anchor, my husband was a cameraman. We didn't have anyone helping us out. So all we had in common was a goal. All we had in common was a passion that we need to do something for our country. It may not be something but big, but something that you know we have a passion towards. Somewhere when we can create a positive impact. The videos became extremely popular after that. The local TV channels asked if they could telecast the videos. So they started telecasting it on Saturdays. And uh, they started getting requests from people that please put it two times a day. So they telecasted it on Saturday and Sundays. So this is how we spent, you know, our last one and a half to two years during the pandemic time, trying to spread positivity during the time, you know, when it was so difficult in everyone's life. So my only question to all of you is, digital media is here to stay. I would be a fool to tell all of you that, hey, don't use Facebook, don't use WhatsApp, it's very bad. No, it is here to stay. How are we going to embrace social media? How are we going to use to make it a positive impact? Or it could be something really, you know, I'm not saying you have to impact lakhs of, you know, thousands of people. Trust me, everyone is an influencer these days, including you and me. Even if you have five or 10 followers in any of your social media account, you are still an influencer. You are influencing those 10, 20 people who are following you. So be very cautious about what you are posting on social media. Try to be really careful about the comments you make. Try not to spread any kind of hatred or any kind of negativity in social media because this only not causes stress on you but also creates so much stress on so many other people without your even knowing. You might think, hey, it's just a comment, but you might end up, you know, making a negative impact on so many people's life. So let yourself not be a reason for making such a negative impact. This is my very, very famous quote because I am coming, you know, from a media background. If you are not paying for the product, remember that you are the product. Let me repeat again. If you are not paying for a product, you are the product. Do we pay to use Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn or any social media accounts? We don't pay, right? It is for free. But the companies are making billions of money using you as a product. That is through advertisements. So channelize the social media in the right direction in your life. Don't use social media for any kind of negativity. Try to use social media to make it an incredible country. Like most of the great speakers, and I think most of them said today, India is going to be the best country in the next decade. And all of you seated over here are a part of that because you are the youth. You are the ones who are setting up the benchmark for the next decade. Next decade is nothing but the 10 to 15 years. And all of you are the ones who are going to contribute majorly, I would say, to the contribution to the growth of our country. So try and see how positively you can make an impact on our country and make India a truly incredible nation. 
in small way or the other. So I would just like to end my speech, you know, this is my simple story. A girl who was in Mango went to Mumbai, who almost went to US, again came back to Mumbai and finally came back to Mangalore, you know, this has been my journey. Lastly, I would just like to show you, you know, a few clips uh, which is relevant to today's topic and, you know, then I would like to conclude. So mo I'm sure most of you have seen this video. Uh, so this was the one which was taken in Paris on the 31st night of this year. I'm with a very special family across the Changla Pass on the way to Pangong Lake. This family is one of the last yak herding families and this is Tinle Nurbu. He has been my student at the Sekmol Alternative School, his mother and his father. Tinle went back to Changtang to take care of his family's yaks. In fact, he's one of the last herders, educated herders, taking care of not only his own yaks but that of many families and to augment his income because most of his peers are joining various jobs and professions to boost his income he has started this nomadic farm and restaurant where you all can visit on your way to Pangong Lake and enjoy yak lassi, yak milk, yak butter and uh, probably yak meat also. This is a wonderful initiative by Tinless to bring back this profession so that it doesn't go extinct in this part of Ladakh. I appeal to you all to visit and there's a yak uh, herders tent that's called Rebo right next to it and you can meet many many yaks here as I did just now. Goodbye. So those were two videos right and I would leave you all with a thought. Do you want to be a person who is there in Paris clicking the photos without even, without even living the moment, without even enjoying it? Or do you want to be the second person? I'm sure most of you would know who he is. He is the one from whom the three movie or the three idiots movie is inspired. So you want to be like him, you know, making an impact in his or her own way. Lastly, I would like to end with Swami Vivekananda's quote. Embrace spirituality. Use the power of social media, make a positive impact in your society and build an incredible Bharat. So my dear friends, Swami Vivekananda always encouraged youth to be of service to others. And I can't think of a better example. Trust me, I'm not saying this because I'm standing here in Ramakrishna Mission. But I really can't think of a better example other than Ramakrishna Mission where you can be of some service to people, to mankind, to the society, to the place where you belong. It's time where you contribute back to the country in a small way, something or the other, for a country, for a land which has given so much to you. You are what you are because of your roots. Never ever forget that. Thank you and Jay Bharat. Become Swami Vivekananda's messenger. Share the video with three of your friends.